Okay, well, this is the beginning of the vector main project, and um, I'm kind of going to describe the entire process of uh, configuring the PC. First thing we're going to work on is DOS, um, and we're going to go through quickly what the hardware that we're going to be using on this is. Um, this is a um, Pentium 4 uh, PC, desktop type PC. It's a gateway, it's an older one. It does have a uh, floppy disk drive over here, so it's good it has a floppy drive because that's really the only way to get DOS into a machine um, using an old version of DOS. And then another thing we're going to use, we're going to show is, um, it has a, we're using a regular, we're using a monitor, it's kind of an all-size monitor, but it'll work for what we're using it for. I've got a regular keyboard plugged in for right now, and I've also got a trackball on there, um, primarily because that's kind of the idea I'm going to try to use, use that for some of the games that require special functions. So um, you'll also see the ZVG card is plugged in, um, we'll need to have that plugged in and, and powered on for some of the testing later on in the process. But um, for right now, let's just uh, spend some time looking at the uh, screen. And I'll zoom in on that and we'll discuss things as we go along. So as you can see from the screen, we're using DOS 6.22. And uh, as far as I know, that was the last version of DOS that Microsoft put out prior, prior to um, switching over to Windows. So... Um, prior to Windows 95, this is the last version of DOS that there was. This is the last 16-bit um, pure DOS that there is. Um, later on, there was a 7, and I think the other ones that were, there, there were actually parts of the other operating of the other operating systems, Windows 95, 98, and things like that. So, as far as Microsoft DOS goes, that's what we're using, 6.22. Um, what we're going to be showing first thing is um, editing the uh, config sys and autoexec back files. There's some special things that need to be added to those for this to all work, and we're going to start there. So we'll go into edit, and we'll edit config.sys. Okay, so as you can see from the config.sys file, um, the first thing we're doing is we're loading up the HIMEM in the beginning, and then we're loading up the EMM386. Uh, and then what this does is this, this basically configures the upper memory of the DOS environment. Because DOS is kind of limited to the first 640K. And then the area above that uh, is used by extra memory that's available. Will get used for um, to store other things. Um, and we'll go into detail, but we'll explain some other things. DOS is equal high and UMB. That means that we're putting the DOS, the actual operating system itself, into the high memory. Um, we also have the number of buffers, which is set to 15. And the um, device high line that you see right there, um, you can just put in device equals C colon backslash CDROM backslash CDROM dot sys um, with the name of the uh, connecting um, connector there, the slash D. The uh, but you, if you use device, it'll put it into lower memory, and if you use device high, it goes into higher memory. Um, and then you see the FCBS, and um, those are stacks, and those are um, basically configuring some of the environment for the uh, for the DOS. Boy, it's been a long time since I actually used this stuff, so remembering what it actually does is another thing. Um, the device high line um, for the Oak CD ROM this this is a generic um, CD. ROM driver, and uh, this will allow you to uh, use a CD-ROM, and it, apparently it'll read DVD discs as well. I haven't really tried that yet, but I was told it would. Um, I don't know. Either way, you, the main point is that you want to be able to get something into the machine that's larger than a floppy disk. Um, you can go out. I have a, on the files I have for this. I have a link for that, and you can download uh, all this stuff, all these parts um, that you'll need, as you see here. Now we're going to edit the autoexec.bat. Okay, we're looking at the autoexec.bat file now, and you'll see the set blaster line here is actually setting up where the, the sound blaster is supposed to be located in memory. Okay, so we've set it to the A220 area of memory, plus we're using interrupt 5. That's what these two characters here, these, these I5 stand for. Um, that's what the computer kind of uses to keep track of it. It looks at, looks at different interrupts and sees what's going on in each of those and looks for information to come back from them. You want to try to 
on a DOS machine try to keep things away from each other. So if you have a lot of devices, it gets difficult. But if you can keep them away from each other, i5 on a blaster should, sound blaster should work great. And we're using a sound blaster live. That's important because it's a PCI-based uh, sound blaster, and they're relatively inexpensive. You should be able to find one pretty easily on eBay, a, a used old one, because um, there's a lot of them apparently. So that's a good that's a good piece of advice. The sound blaster software also set this set command in here for the set sin um, equals c colon backslash dot drive. This is actually just part of what it does by its when it installs that software. The set ZVG port equals P three seventy eight I seven D three and and the main main two parts of that are the P three seventy eight and the I seven. Um, the um, the I seven uh, this particular uh, setting basically tells it where to find the find the uh, the ZVG port and three seventy eight means parallel port and interrupt seven. So we're keeping that away from the I five. So the idea being that the blasters on on interrupt five and the ZVG ports on 7, they shouldn't have any problems uh, with colli collisions between the two ports. Next up is the mouse equals mouse, sequ set mouse equals C colon S. It's just a, it's just a variable. Um, just looking at anything that looks for it will know that it, know where the mouse software is located at. Um, the next part that comes up is the actual Sound Blaster software that gives it the emulation. Um, so the SBE init is actually taking the PCI card and kind of putting an emulation program against it so that it so that the sound blaster now is emulating the original sound blaster card so you kind of you've got to have this piece of software um, again you can find this on the internet we're going to have all the links uh, included or we'll have even have a package you can download um, path equals c colon backslash dos um, there's no equals in there but it, it, it what it stands for is, is that you can have a list of places that the system will look for, look through and try to find software. So if I just type in, um, you know, edit, I, it knows to look in the DOS directory because it's in the path. You could you could also set up your um, your main um, your main directory in this as well. So that all you have to do is type in you know something and do it right into the uh, right into your main software. Um, load high equals c colon backslash mouse backslash mouse. So this is actually going to load into the higher memory the mouse software. So we're actually going to have a mouse loaded here. Um, you need to have the mouse drivers. I'm using actual Microsoft uh, mouse drivers that I got with a Microsoft mouse. So um, I'm not sure what the what the use what how easy they are to get a hold of. Um, next step up here is the uh, load high equals the MC. MSCD EX that stands for Microsoft CD extensions, and what this line will do is make your is the other is the other part of getting your CD-ROM drive to come up. The last line is completely optional. It's just something I got really used to. It's called DOS key, and DOS key allows you to repeat your last command when you're working in DOS. That's the primary function I use it for. I'm sure there's a lot of the great fe features for DOS key that I've never used, but um, without it, I just feel all, all messed up. So. That's what our basic auto exec that bat, line, bat looks looks like. Uh, again, this last line here is optional. If you're not going to use a CD-ROM drive, which would make it a lot harder to load all this stuff on uh, after the fact, uh, you won't need the C CD stuff. Um, if you're not using a sound blaster, you're going to have to ins you know insert your own um, DOS-based drivers that actually work, and that is I've, I've heard is kind of complicated. So um, this is a this should be fine. Also, like. Like I said, Sound Blaster Live cards are pretty inexpensive. Get them on um, eBay, pretty cheap. So, good choice. Okay, so we're booting up DOS, and this is what you would normally see when it boots up. This is running all of our all of our uh, commands that we put into our files, and um, it sits at a prompt, and that's pretty much uh, not all that exciting. So now what we're going to look at it is we're going to see what's in the in the root of the C drive. So this is kind of like if you were using your modern day operating system like uh, you know either Windows or Linux or a Apple. You'd be looking at what's in the root directory and you'd see folders and things like that. Well, by using the dir command, you can then look inside and see what files are in there. Now, you know, what, some of the things that are important to us in this particular part is that you see that there's an SB Live directory which has software for the Sound Blaster Live that was installed by the software, um, the drivers. Um, there's a DB main directory, and that's the one that we're going to be spending some particular time on right now. So we're going to go into this into the DB main directory by typing in CD, which stands for ch change directory, and uh, we're going to type in um, DB main. 
And notice that we're in the DB main directory. And if we do a DIR in here for directory, we will see a bunch of stuff go by so fast we can't see it all. So what we're going to do again, this time is DIR space slash P. And that put, gives us the uh, pause at the end. So we can press any key to continue. Um, some of the important things you're going to look at in here is you'll notice that the, to, to the left there is dvmeme.exe uh, up the second, second line right underneath the DIRs and you'll see that there's a 1000, that's the big one, that's the actual program that runs the uh, runs main. Um, there's some menu programs in here as well. There's actually two different menu programs that are available for, for this and um, so they're bo they'll both actually be installed in, in there by default I think anyway. If not you can put them in. Now what happens next is um, we're going to look at um, the rest of the directories. We have artwork at the bottom down there where it says artwork and DIR and then we're going to scroll down and you'll see that there's some additionals, um, additional directories in here. Uh, the docs directory, ROMs directory. ROMs is important because that's where all your ROM files for all your uh, all your games are going to go. Um, every distribution of main doesn't come with ROMs. Um, again, nobody will tell you where to get them at, but um, but that's where they go. Also, the samples directory is going to contain additional samples. Some of the games over time have gotten their sound put back on, but this is an older version of, of DOS um, and, and and DOS version of MAME. So since it's an older version of MAME, you're going to have to put samples in there for some of the games that have sound or have all the sounds that, that you expect. Now below that is, is four files, which are... Um, this really eluded me. When I tried to run the MAME, it came up with a code saying, get this, get this program. So we're going to include it um, as part of, of, of our list of programs that we're including. Um, so you want to have these. Uh, for some reason, under DOS, um, because it's actually a 16-bit operating system, this is kind of like a 32 to 16 link. And I'm guessing that the developers that worked on the, on the, on the main programs um, were kind of expecting you to be doing this in a Windows 95 plus environment. So in order to get this to work, you got to throw these things in there. It kind of does some tricking and everything works great. So, again, we'll include that. Um, really weird weird when I found, found I had to put those suckers in there. Um, so there we go. That's the basics of, the, um, of what we're using for it. Um, so what we should be able to do now is to load up a, up a game. We should be able to type in DV main and a game that we, you know, that we're legally allowed to run. So, um, I can run Star Wars legally because I have one. So, we're going to bring up Star Wars. The first time you go through this, it's always going to ask you for the, the, the codes. And we're not going to worry about this part right for now, because um, there's going to be ways of getting around this. The menu's going to fix this for us. But for right now, it's going to ask us which, which uh, sound card we have, and um, we're going to say it's the Sound Blaster. We're pressing 1. And then you'll see that Star Wars is running. Now, the key to Star Wars running is that um, it won't come up unless you have, you have a, um, your vector main, uh, your vector board is plugged in. So you actually have to have that plugged in so it'll be able to find it and be able to you know, think it's driving something. But that brings up Star Wars for us. At this point, we can actually play it on the regular monitor, not on the vector monitor. And again, we're not going to go into the vector monitor part of this part of the program yet because our main goal is do we get to this point or not? Okay, so we can actually run a game and up it up it will come. Okay, this concludes our DOS portion, and um, we'll continue on with more information on the rest of the configuration. Um, plugging in the sound card into um, the actual cabinet and there will be a lot more steps coming along um, pretty much as I do them. So um, this is where I'm at. We'll be um, using a, a um, space dual cabinet um, and going from there. So thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps you get your, get your, um, your basic configuration working.